Hi Year 7, welcome to your first video lesson on your new chemistry topic of acids and alkalis. I'm going to start today with the first lesson, everyday uses of acids and alkalis. So today we're going to be able to describe the uses of acids and alkalis in everyday products. And we're going to do this by being able to state some everyday acids and alkalis, explain why some are more dangerous than others, and classify them in terms of their risk and relate this to their uses. So you've got a few key words for the lesson, acid, alkali, risk, hazard, and pH scale. So through the lesson, I'm going to be talking to you about the, uh, those different words. So you might want to get yourself uh, some paper and a pen so you can make a note of some of the things that I say, or some of the things that are on the PowerPoint. So if you pause it now, I'm going to get yourself your equipment and then we will start the lesson. So before we begin, I just want to go through what those keywords mean, just in case you've never heard them before or in case you've forgotten. So the first one is an acid. And an acid is something that is one to six on the pH scale. So if you've used universal indicator before, it turns the indicator red or orange. Then an alkali is eight to 14 on the pH scale. So they would turn universal indicator purple or a blue color. Now acids and alkalis react together and they make water. Now water is what we call neutral and things that are neutral are number seven on the pH scale and they are a green color in universal indicator. Then we've got risks and hazards and we're going to be talking about the differences between those and when you might have seen those in practical lessons but risks are things that can go wrong and hazards are the problems that are caused by that. And then we've got the pH scale, which I've just talked about then, and we use that to classify whether something's acidic or alkaline or neutral somewhere in the middle. So we'll make a start now. So the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna show you some pictures of products that you might have in your house or similar ones to the ones you have in your house. And I want you to guess if they are acid or alkali. So you might wanna write this down on your paper, uh, what you think they are, and then we will talk about them. So the first one's vinegar. Now think about what vinegar tastes like. Think about what vinegar um, is like when you put it onto things. And do we think that's acid or alkali? So those of you that guessed acid are correct. Vinegar is an acid. So try and remember that, and that should help you with the others as we go through. So now in comparison, to vinegar, we've got toothpaste this time. So think about what we use toothpaste for. We use that to protect our teeth, to clean our teeth. So thinking about what we've just learned then about vinegar being a food and acidic, what do we think toothpaste might be? Okay, toothpaste, those of you that said alkali, you are correct, toothpaste is an alkali. And the reason why we use toothpaste is to protect your teeth from the acid in your foods. So when we eat foods that are acidic, they can be harmful to your teeth. So if we use toothpaste that's alkali, it neutralizes that acid and it makes water. So neutralizing is a word we've not mentioned yet, and it's one of our uh, key words for this whole topic. So neutralizing is a description of a reaction when an acid and an alkali react together. And the reason why it's called neutralization is because water is produced. And if you remember what I told you at the beginning about the pH scale, water is number seven on the pH scale. So it's what we call a neutral product. Okay, lemons this time. So again, think about what lemons taste like. Think about um, how it feels in your mouth when you eat a lemon. Okay, those of you that guessed acid, you are correct. Lemon is acidic and we're going to come back to lemons in a minute. Okay, next one is bleach. Bleach is a cleaning product. We use it to kill bacteria and viruses that might be in your house. So do you think that needs to be 
acid or alkali. Okay, those of you that guessed alkali, you are correct. A lot of cleaning products, so bleach, toothpaste even, are alkalis. Okay, next one is Gaviscon. So Gaviscon is an indigestion tablet. It helps against heartburn. So if we think you've got stomach acid, do we need something to help heartburn to be acid or alkali? Those of you that guessed alkali, you are correct. Gaviscon is an alkali. So heartburn is when your stomach acid rises a little bit too far up and so it starts to burn. So when you take Gaviscon or an indigestion tablet, it neutralizes, so it's that keyword again, neutralizes the stomach acid and then that helps to reduce the heartburn. Okay, so we're going to look at some uses now, how, how we find them useful. So that again, it might be things that you've got in your house or things that you've seen before. So ethanoic acid, which is vinegar, so I said we'd come back to that, preserves pickles. So if you've got uh, pickled onions or gherkins in a jar, you don't have to keep them in the fridge and they stay fresh. They don't go off for a long time. You can keep pickles for months and months and they don't go off. And the reason for that is that they are in acid and the acid preserves them because bacteria can't grow uh, in such an acidic environment. Same reason why manufacturers add acid to orange squash, stop it from going off. So if you've got squash in your cupboard, not fresh orange juice, but orange squash that you add water to, you don't need to keep it in the fridge. Again, it keeps for months and months and it doesn't go off. And the reason for that is that manufacturers have added some acid into it. So acids are vital to life, as you've just I've uh, seen two examples then. Lemon juice is acidic, so I said we'd come back to lemons. Let's think about how they can be useful. So I'm going to give you a minute to write down your ideas and then we'll go through the answer in a second. Okay, if you haven't quite finished writing down your ideas, if you just pause the video and then you can get your ideas written down before we go through the answers. But for those of you that are finished, I'll go through the answers now. So vitamin C is in fruit like lemons, limes and oranges, and that helps to keep skin healthy. It protects sperm and it helps to make bones. So it's actually really, really useful and it's essential that we have vitamin C in our bodies. But I've sure you're wondering how vitamin C relates to acids. Well, actually, vitamin C is ascorbic acid. So vitamin C is an acid and it is essential that we have it. So it's a vital acid. It's a useful acid. Another useful acid is omega-3 fatty acids. Now, you might have heard of omega-3 uh, on adverts sometimes. They put it on a box of products like maybe Fish Fingers have got it on. And the reason why it's essential we have omega-3 fatty acids is it protects our body against disease and it helps us to repair damage. And we find those in oily fish. So it's another acid that is essential to our lives, another useful acid. Hydrochloric acid. Again, we've mentioned stomach acid earlier when we talked about Gaviscon. So stomach acid helps us to digest our food. Without it, we wouldn't be able to digest our food. So hydrochloric acid is essential when it's in our stomach, but also we heard earlier when we talked about indigestion tablets, when it isn't in our stomach, it can cause some problems. And outside the stomach, it's always an irritant. So you might remember using it in a practical or seeing it in a practical. And you'll have seen bottles like that and they've got the little symbols on them. So if you remember that orange square with the cross in it, and that means that it's an irritant. So it can 
um, damage your skin. We have to wear safety glasses so it doesn't damage your eyes. And if it's concentrated enough, it can also be corrosive, which means it will burn your skin. It can damage the table. Um, if it got in your eyes, it would be very painful. So we, again, that's why we have to wear safety glasses and why we have to wash our hands after we've handled acids. So, so acids can also be a nuisance, as we've just seen with them being irritants or corrosive. So methanoic acid is what's found in bee ant and nettle stings. And it what makes them really painful because it irritates the skin and makes it itchy. So now we're going to look at what concentrated means, because I've just mentioned that hydrochloric acid, when it's concentrated, can be really harmful. So what does concentration mean? So if you think, if you have a look at those pictures, we've got a picture of two glasses of juice and a bottle of orange juice. So how could those relate to concentration? Where might you have seen that word before? So I'm going to give you a minute to have a think, maybe write some of your ideas down and then we'll go through them together in a second. OK, so let's see. Uh, we'll go through what concentrated means, see if it's the same as your answer. So the concentration of a solution is a measure of how crowded the solute particles are. So there's a word there, there's two words there, actually, solution and solute. So solute is a thing that is dissolved and solution is what's made when you dissolve the solute into, um, in this case, water. So the more concentrated the solution, the more particles it contains in a volume. So if you look at those two pictures there, we've got one um, that's got four green circles and four red circles and one that has a lot of green and a lot of red circles. So which of those do you think is showing a concentrated solution? If you think about the amount of space they take up is the same. So which one is concentrated? Hey, those of you that said the one that's got lots of particles is the concentrated one were correct because they take up the same amount of space. It's the same volume, but they've got more particles crowded in. So it is more concentrated. So if you think about if you had 100 milliliters of liquid in a beaker, the first one, you've got just those eight particles in it in the same 100 milliliters, but in the second one, you've got all those particles packed into that same amount of space. So that one's got more particles per space than the other one. So it's more concentrated. Okay, last little task that we will go through together is see what you've learned from this lesson. So what is an acid? What is an alkali? And what does concentrated mean? So I want you to have a think and on your paper, write down what you think an acid is, an alkali is and what concentrated means. I will go through the answers in a few minutes. So I'll give you a bit of time to write your answers down and then we will go through them together. Off you go.
OK, for those of you that haven't finished yet, if you pause the video and you can finish your writing and then press play, because I'm going to go through the answers now. So the first one, an acid is. So we did this at the very beginning of the lesson. An acid is a solution with a pH of 1 to 6. They can neutralise alkalis and they react in certain ways like with some metals. They fizz when you put them with metals. So again, we've come back to that word neutralise. If you remember, that's what happens when an acid and an alkali react together and make water. Say we've got an alkali is. An alkali is a solution with a pH of 8 to 14. They can neutralise acids, so again, they react with acids and alkalis make water, and alkalis dissolve in water. And finally, concentrated, and this is the last little bit that we did, means how many particles are in a particular space. The more particles there are, then the more concentrated the solution is. So well done if you've got all three of those. You might want to pause the video now just to make a quick note of them if you didn't get all of that information down, because that will be really, really useful for your next few lessons, but also for the little educate quiz that comes after this. OK, so well done, everyone. So now I want you to go on to educate and answer the questions on acids and alkalis. Good luck and stay safe.